12 time senior major champion Bernhard Langer. Just to start, how does it feel to be back here at Firestone Country Club for the College Companies Championship? It, it feels awesome. It's uh, been such a, a big place for golf, I think, professional golf, men's golf. Um, it, it has a bit of history in my career, too. It's the fir very first tournament I ever played in the U.S. was right here. And uh, it was my birthday, I think, on Saturday. And as I teed off, everybody sang happy birthday, Bernhard, which was, uh, you know, very uncommon in Europe. They may not have done that. Uh, but I guess somebody wrote it in the papers that it's my birthday, and I was kind of co-leader, I think, or some. So uh, it was a cool experience. Yeah. It's great to be back. Awesome. Uh, the last time we saw you out here was at the U.S. Senior Open. You were hoisting the trophy at the end of the week, your record-setting <coughs> 46th win on PGA Tour Champions. How has the last week and a half been for you since that happened? Very busy. Uh, I, was, I was hoping to play with my grandkids most of the yeah. week and, <laughs> and kids, uh, but it turned out that I spent a lot of hours answering um, text messages and emails yeah. uh, from friends all over the world. I had hundreds and hundreds of them, which is great, but <laughs> it, it was time consuming. And uh, yeah, it was wonderful. You know, it's, it's nice to win and then have a week off to enjoy it yep. because sometimes we win and we got to go to the next tournament and you're into the routine and the rut of things and, and you're too busy to even enjoy what you've just accomplished. So it was pretty cool. All right. Open up to questions from the group. For us, you compare Century World to Firestone already. Do they have these differences? Anything that favors your game? No, it, it's different. They're both long. Uh, that's one thing they have in common. The courses, they're both long. They're you both, uh, both courses, you have to drive the ball very well. Uh, the difference is Sentry, the rough was extremely punishing. I mean, most of the time you could only wedge it out 50 yards, you know, unless you're very fortunate and got some kind of lie, but that didn't happen. Um, so you had to hit the fairways, uh, otherwise you get punished immediately. And uh, there's a lot of water in play at Century World. There isn't that much water here. I think we have, what, two holes with water here. Um, otherwise, yeah, the length of the course is similar. The setup, maybe, I think it was the ball was running more there than it, than it is right now here, and we're going to get more rain. So the ball will not run as much on the fairways. It, it, wor it wasn't hybrids, it was three woods, I'm afraid. Uh, so <laughs> it looked like a hybrid for most guys, but I'm not as long as them. So I, I was testing three different three woods just to, yeah, I, I uh, broke a couple of three woods, my favorites. I didn't break them. They, they caved in or they had a stress fracture, whatever you call it. So uh, I had have to find a three wood I like and, and replace my old one. And it's one of the hardest clubs to find because you want to hit a three wood off the grass and, and you know have a certain flight. You want to hit it far, but you also want to stop it when it hits the green. And uh, then you also want to hit it good off the tee. So it's, for me, one of the hardest clubs to, to find. Uh, so that's why I was hitting a bunch of three woods. There were three different ones. <laughs> Father time is always winning at some point, so I'm just trying to slow down the, the process of you know aging and and falling apart. Uh, I certainly have more aches and pains now than I've had you know 10 years ago or 20 years ago. That just comes with the territory. When you think of what uh, someone like I have been doing for 50 years now, uh, playing professional golf, uh, the beating our body takes, the traveling the different time zones, the different beds and pillows, the twisting and turning and just, you know, the vibration coming up the shaft, uh, walking in golf shoes for six to eight hours a day. You go on and on. It's, it's going to take a toll sooner or later, and, and it has taken a toll, but I just a little less on me maybe. Uh, again, I said that 
10 days ago, I think. Uh, hopefully I have my mother's genes. She's going to be 100 in two weeks. And, uh, you know, that will certainly help because genes are very important. You're not the you're not the only one who's asked that question. Uh, it's not a one thing. You know, you can't say, "Well, I attribute my success to my caddy, or to my wife, or to my hard work, or to my discipline, or to the team around me, or to my genes." No, it's it's a whole conglomerate of things that that is a part of it. You know, there's the coach, the caddy, the team, the the family. But there's the dedication, the discipline, the hard work. I, I work out every day and have been for many, many years. Um, and there's, there's too many things. You know, I've been blessed by God with an incredible hand-eye coordination. And I'm good at any sport, ha have been always. Um, so that will certainly help me. There's no guarantee, uh, no, no doubt about it in my mind. You know, whether I play tennis or ping pong or skiing or throwing something or catching something, I was always good at everything. So uh, that will help you to, to a certain level, but from that point on, it's hard work and discipline, having the right people on your side, uh, getting good advice, and many other things. Yes, please. Yeah, that's another thing that everybody has. And I think it was given to me. You know, it's the drive I have is very unusual, you know, to to be turning 66 in a month from now and still want to improve and get better and compete with the young guys out here. Many people don't have that. You look at Byron Nelson. His his drive was to win enough money to buy a farm and be a farmer. and. So everybody's different. In, in my case, I love to compete. I love the game of golf. And I'm healthy and good enough to do it. So I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, I, I was trying to. When I first opened up my phone Monday morning, it was uh, <clears throat> about 300 text messages and 280 emails. And as I answered some of them, there were more pouring in on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. So I, I, I couldn't count them at that point in time because I answered too many already and deleted or whatever. So, you know, I'm, I'm guessing somewhere near 500 each. But uh, it took me many hours over a period of five, six days to, to answer them because I I want to, many of them are friends or people I know, and, and I don't just want to say, I don't want to erase them, and I don't want to just say thanks. I want to, you know, make a personal comment, so it takes time. Was one of them Hale? Yes, it was this time around, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What did he say? He just said uh, something, I, you know, I didn't memorize it, but he said congrats on, uh, you know, creating a new record and uh, something I, I figured you would do it or, you know, something like that. So it was very positive and we have a lot of respect for each other. Did you, um, did you feel pressure as, uh, as people kept asking you about it? Because I remember you were saying in, in Century, it's not something you think about, but people talk about it. Now that it's, now that it's your passion, is there kind of like maybe a, a little bit of a, a, a relief factor to it? Or? Maybe a little bit, but really, you know, it, it wasn't my main focus. My main focus was never that. My main focus was always the here and now, the next day, the next tournament, and to be the best I can be. It's a process, and if you're good at that process, if you're good at the here and now and today and tomorrow, the rest will happen. And that's how I tried to, you know, play through my whole career.
Yes. Uh, that's impossible to answer. Sorry, you know, I hear people say, "Well, golf is ninety percent mental." That's just <laughs> like if you if you say that, you have no IQ. I'm sorry. Um, it is ninety percent mental if you put two players together with the same at the same level of technique and experience and and capability. Then it becomes very much mental because what is going to differentiate the two guys that are just playing you know the at the very top of the game so then i would agree but if i take you on tomorrow or today i don't know how good you are but it doesn't matter you could be the best mental and i could be one of the worst i'm still going to beat you out there just because of the different uh, technique we have and the different experiences we have yes sir Uh, only the first seven years. First seven years. Do you have somebody to kind of to look at you, or it just looks like your swing is it, it continues to be the exact same from day five of the Masters that I saw. It's not. The first time. But it's not. If you but break it down in a video, you break it down in slow motion, it's different. Tour Edge is based out of Chicago. It's a company-owned family. Two brothers own it. Uh, 35 years or more they've been on the, on the market, uh, doing very well. Um, I got together with them when I tried their hybrids and loved the hybrid and used it at the Masters and hit some great shots with it. And then uh, I got... Uh, sacked basically or let go by uh, who was it was Adams at the time Taylor made bought Adams remember that and Taylor made had no intentions of doing anything with Adams they just bought him so they wouldn't lose a lawsuit or something like that so they let Adams just run into the ground they didn't even make clubs anymore with the name of Adams uh, so they offered me a deal which was literally a shame uh, put it that way so and they knew it, so I just said, okay, thanks for the 10 years I had with Adams, but I'm not going to accept what you're giving me. That's ridiculous. So I was with nobody for a year or two, and that's when uh, Tour Edge came along. And, uh, you know, their deal is not brilliant either in terms of money, but I know I have some support out here. They're out here every day I'm out here. There's uh, a representative from Tour Edge out here. They're trying extremely hard to make me the best equipment I'm looking for. And uh, they understand uh, how difficult it is to, uh, you know, make everything for every player, but they make a tremendous product. Uh, I've been with them now for several years. They're willing to listen, they're willing to learn, and they're willing to make adjustments if needed, which isn't very often, but every once in a while. And, and those are attributes that I don't see in many other companies. Many other companies say, oh, we have our engineers, we know everything better than you do. Uh, and I don't always agree with that because um, I think when you play at the level we play, we sometimes know things differently than some of the engineers. One more follow-up. Mm -hmm. I still use an X shaft, which is the same in my driver as always. Um, the three wood I'm experimenting with right now has an S, but it's a stiff S. So, and the irons I've used have been the same shaft I've used for 40 years. So I have not gone much softer, but it's something I'm contemplating and uh, trying to see if it does make a difference. I have lost. Uh, five to 10 yards the last sort of five years. I really didn't notice any loss of distance till I was about 60. And, and then it started to, to happen. And so 
I work out a little differently. I've gained a couple of miles of club head speed again uh, with my driver, a couple of miles an hour. So, um, you know, as I said, I'm trying to slow down the process of aging, but I, I'm not going to win. I'm just going to try and slow it down. It's going to happen. Absolutely. Yeah, his play is exceptional, and and I think Steve has always been an exceptional player. He's the complete package. He is long. He's fairly straight. Uh, one of the best wedge players in short game in the world, and and a good putter, very good putter at times, sometimes the best. So when you put that together, uh, you know we were choking or not choking, talking about him the other day. He can win with anybody on the back. He's using different caddies continuously and wins with doesn't matter who. To me, that's an incredible attribute. Somebody else, not many people can do that, okay? Some, some people rely on their caddy. He does everything himself pretty much. And uh, I'm a little bit that way, even though I rely on Terry more so because he's been with me for many years. But... I've won with my kids on the bag or with a friend or my brother, and, and uh, I know what that means. And so, yeah, Steve, if he had committed himself fully to this tour, the last, how old is he? 56. So he's played limited schedule. If he had played full time, he would have had another 10, 15 wins already. And, and uh, the way he's playing right now, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, just, you know, you just look at the Schwab Cup. He's got a lead that is incredible. And if he, as I say, if he commits to this tour full time, plays a full schedule, stops hunting and and other things he does, whatever he enjoys doing, uh, he could compile a, a bunch of wins, and he will continue to do so if he stays healthy. And that's another thing. He had the, you know, what I call the COVID issue, nobody really called it that, but I'm convinced it was COVID where he almost died and he lost several months of his career to where he couldn't play at all, didn't even know if he could survive and come back, and and he did all that. So, uh, yeah, he's he's very, very good, very special. All right, thank you, Bert. I got one. Last one. You talked about your living quarters in this place and your flush in the roommate. And what <laughs> you how that came about? Uh, I'm living with Alex Checker, who's German. Uh, then, but I, I didn't really know. I was asking, and I live with Rod Pampling and John Daly. So those are the four, uh, four uh, people living in a four-bedroom, what do you call it, apartment, condominium. Anyways, I was asking if there was a room available, and they told me, no, we're full. And I said, put me on the waiting list. If anybody cancels, I'd love to stay here. I've never stayed here. And, and uh, I heard it's pretty good. So sure enough, a week later or two, I get a call. We have a room. You would be staying with Daily Pampling and Jack. I said, that's fine. Put me in. So that's where we are. No problems. Depends where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much, yeah, Bernhard. You're welcome. <laughs>